Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Well, I've got your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch stores on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. This one is kind of going out to the Democrats in my audience. Now, while I'm aware that my audience is largely libertarians, conservatives, and or Republicans, I'd ask that you share this with the Democrats that you know. Because Democrats, you are playing with fire, and your obsession with Trump means that you're too damn stupid to see it. Now, I hate to call viewers stupid, because it tends to drive them away. But in this case, I really have no choice. Democrats, you're being fantastically stupid. You hold in your hands the matchsticks that will spark a civil war. Now, I've generally discussed how the left will probably start a civil war in 2020 when Trump wins and is reelected. They've already lost the capacity for rational thought. They have tacitly or publicly approved of the Antifa, a violent terrorist group that I have talked about in a previous video, and you can find a link in that to my description, in my description box. And for four years, for over four years, they have called Republicans and conservatives every vile name that they can think of. Not that the right is entirely blameless. Much of the lack of civility that is the spark to ignite a civil war lies squarely on the shoulders of President Donald Trump. Prior presidents have simply ignored their critics. President Trump actively fights them on social media. Now, the problem with social media is that the anonymity means that you don't have to be civil to one another. Where political conversations were once the basically discussed over by neighbors over the back fence, or maybe if you're watching a football game on TV with your friends, it is now done solely through social media. And when you're discussing something with an actual human being, your discourse is tempered by it being personal. You have to worry about making the other person feel bad, or if you get too insulting, you get a punch in the face. But when you're basically anonymous online, all that goes completely out the window. You can be a complete dren hole without any significant repercussions. You can make someone feel bad or angry enough to want to do physical violence, and you don't have to care at all. Now, I was in information technology for 40 years, and it is no exaggeration to say that I built important parts of the modern internet with my own two hands. From Chicago to Rapid City, South Dakota, you will find my fingerprints on everything from physical cables to physical servers and to networking and systems administration. My entire career has been centered around the internet and telecommunications, and in fact, I predate the modern internet going all the way back to dial-up bulletin board systems that ran at a whopping 300 bits per second. I watched the collapse of online civility, and then I watched it spread to the rest of the world. The best example I can give of this, of where and when it finally fell apart, starts basically predates the modern internet. It was in the days of dial-up bulletin board systems, and there existed a network called FidoNet. It was a way for individual bulletin board systems to share forums between each other, and FidoNet eventually went global. For several years, I was a vice moderator of the FidoNet Trek Forum, which was devoted to Star Trek. At various times, it included hundreds of participants and thousands of lurkers, and in fact, some of the production staff and actors of Star Trek The Next Generation, which was in production at that time, lurked on the forum. There was an individual whom I will not name so as not to upend his life in any way. He was the predecessor to the modern social media user. He was extremely rabid about Star Trek. He was very intelligent. He believed everything. He knew everything about it. And if you disagreed, he considered you stupidly wrong. He would start massive arguments that led to what we called then flame wars, although today it's just commonplace behavior on social media. The phrase agree to disagree was not in his lexicon. He would never admit that he might be wrong. He would never compromise. He would argue and name-call with increasing vehemence until you gave up and publicly admitted that he was the better man. He would accept no other outcome. And all of this over a fracking TV show. Now, as moderators, we had to ban him, generally temporarily, when he would become disruptively argumentative. 
That usually meant that he became argumentative with, with the moderators ourselves, refusing to adhere to our instructions to shut the hell up, and then arguing with us about our instructions to him. We ultimately had to ban him permanently. He was completely disruptive and simply would never change. He has since been banned from every online Star Trek forum that he ever joined. He was last seen on trekbbs.com in 2010, where he was permabanned from there as well. And that was where I saw the beginnings of online incivility, a worldwide Star Trek forum. Well, today, this kind of inci incivility should be entirely recognizable, as it permeates, permeates all social media. Just as with the individual I described, Relative anonymity means that no one has to be civil. No one has to agree to disagree. No one has to find common ground. You are perfectly free to call any, anyone any names using any profanity that you like, to make baseless charges about their ability to satisfy their sexual partner, to their intelligence, and to their politics. It is all fair game. While this is largely due to anonymity, it's also exacerbated by President Trump. In fact, I find his behavior entirely the same as the individual I mentioned from damn near 30 years ago. If I didn't know that it was President Trump, I think it was that individual from 30 years ago. I mean, consider the similarities. Trump is extremely rabid about his political situation. He is very intelligent. He believes he knows everything. And if you disagree, he continues you stupidly wrong. Trump starts massive arguments that lead to what we would have called flame wars, though it's worse today. Because he's president, his incivility encourages incivility in those who agree with him. This encourages incivility in those who disagree with him. The phrase agree to disagree is not in Trump's, Trump's lexicon. Trump will never admit that he might be wrong. Trump will never compromise. Trump will argue and name call with increasing vehemence until you give up and publicly admit that he is the better man. He will accept no other outcome. All of this is exactly as I described about that individual who did the same things 30 years ago. Unfortunately, Trump has no moderators. Where we could ban someone who became disruptively argumentative, no one can ban Trump. He should, however, stop posting on Twitter because he's only making things worse. However, being an uncivil SOB isn't grounds for impeachment. And that's what Democrats don't understand. Having never experienced someone like this before, as I have, they don't know how to deal with him. Well, here's how you deal with him, Democrats, and listen very closely. You don't pay any attention to him. If anything, you say, that statement is so far beneath my dignity to respond to that it's right next to dinosaur bones. And you leave it at that. What you don't do is attempt impeachment proceedings without any basis for them. We all know that you have no basis for it. If you did, you would have open hearings, just as there were for both President Nixon and President Clinton. You'd allow the opposition party to bring evidence to the table, just as was done with both President Nixon and President Clinton. You are operating entirely in secrecy, allowing occasional leaks to a propagandist press that probably have no basis in objective reality. If you want me to believe that you actually have something, then all you have to do is be public and fair about it. Until then, I'm going to assume that all you're doing is trying to dig up dirt that doesn't actually exist. To any rational person, and particularly to Republicans, you look like scumbags. It's only Democrats who long ago lost the capacity for rational thought who think that you're trying to bring real justice to Trump. In all reality, I don't think you have any real plan to impeach Trump. You figured out that no one currently running for the Democratic nomination can possibly beat Trump. In the first place, they're all outright communists and socialists. Their political ideologies are abhorrent to anyone not living in New York City, Los Angeles, or San Francisco, and not even the suburbs of those cities find communism and socialism acceptable. They will not vote for a communist or a socialist. Furthermore, they have all, each and every one of them, the charisma of a cockroach. All but one of them is easily labeled with something negative but true, as Trump has now labeled Biden, Sleepy Joe. He can label almost anyone else, well, literally everyone else, by putting red in front of their name, and it will be factually accurate. If you had brain one, you'd nominate Tulsi Gabbard. She'd lose, but at least it would be graceful. Given her military background, it would be hard for Trump to find a label for her and make it stick. And being an attractive and relatively rational woman makes it even more difficult. But we all know that you don't have brain one. 
Tulsi is far too much of a centrist for the modern Democratic Party. You'll probably nominate Bernie Sanders, and he will go down in flames against Trump. All Trump needs to do is call him Crazy Bernie, and it will be, well, factually accurate. But you don't actually intend to impeach Trump. You're just going to drag his name through the mud until Election Day and hope that it will be enough to cause voters to support a communist. Well, it's not going to work. As with the 2016 election, voters will hold their noses and vote for the obviously lesser of two evils. That describes a lot of Republican voters, by the way. While Trump certainly has a lot of grassroots support, a large number of Republicans voted for him simply because Hillary was obviously corrupt and outright evil. Um, by the way, as someone who's done IT work for government on occasion, I can tell you that if I did what she did with her email server, I would presently be doing time in a federal prison for espionage. Hillary is corrupt, evil, and as we can now see from her having labeled Tulsi Gabbard as a Russian asset, Hillary is nuttier than a bag of walnuts. Hillary should be sitting in a federal prison right now. That she is not frustrates the average person to no end. It is proof positive that there is a two-tiered justice system in the United States, one for the little guy and one for the big guys and the elite. The little guy always get what they have coming to them, and the elite walk away without so much as a slap on the wrist. But even looking or fooling around with impeachment means that Democrats are playing with fire and they're too stupid to know it. According to polls, almost 70% of Americans believe that the U.S. is headed towards civil war, and I agree. The most likely way that this will occur is that the left will start a civil war when Trump wins. They have already lost the capacity for rational thought. When he wins, the incessant whining that they've done for the last three years will break into active hostility. The left will believe that it's time to kill anyone with whom they have the slightest political disagreement. However, it can also be started by the right, and it begins with impeachment. You have nothing on Trump, as it's obvious from your secrecy and public behavior. If you actually impeach him, you'll need to get the Senate to vote to convict him, and at present, that's highly unlikely, though as the 2020 election nears, you'll probably be lobbying long and hard for it. The only way that a Democrat can win is if Trump is impeached and removed from office. That's your only winning strategy. Get him out of office by any means necessary prior to the election. If you succeed, the right will start a civil war. And unlike the left, who will do it out of sheer insanity, the right will actually have some valid basis for it. And if it comes to a right-started civil war, even I, a libertarian who has fundamental disagreements with Trump on po po policy, I'll be forced to side with the right. Now, before either of you gets too damn trigger happy, I want you to consider what a modern civil war will mean. Now, if you're smart, you will heed the strategy, as I've explained in my video, Winning the Second American Revolution in a Week, and there's a link to that in my description box, and in it I explain how a modern civil war could be won in only a week, and with relatively little bloodshed. However, I know I'm a tiny voice, and I assume that my strategy won't even be considered. That being the case, here is what a modern civil war would bring. The collapse of the food supply chain. That means that food grown and manufactured in my part of the country will no longer reach the cities. In my estimation, any town larger than 20,000 and that is not immediately adjacent to agricultural area will starve. America's cities will starve. There will be food riots, murder, mayhem, cannibalism, and the eventual death by the tens of millions. Millions of corpses will litter the streets. This will bring death in terms of cholera and other communicable diseases. The rats will be fat and happy for a while as they spread disease to what little remains of the city's populations and outlying areas. It will also bring the collapse of the cities, which will also mean the collapse of major infrastructure. Just as the cities can't survive without the food that my part of the country provides, there is infrastructure provided by cities without which our lives will become vastly more difficult. Now, it won't be fatal unless, you know, as long as you're in a town of 20,000 or less that's immediately adjacent to agricultural land, because you'll probably be able to subsist as a farm or a ranch hand, although you won't get much food out of the deal. The Internet will be dead or reduced to something we no longer recognize. 
A lot of major infrastructure for that resides in large cities. Without people like me to tend it, they will break and never be repaired. Oil production will come to a near standstill. You won't be driving a car anytime soon. The power grid will subsequently collapse, so you better have a wood-burning stove or a fireplace if you want to stay alive in a place like Lincoln, Nebraska. And air conditioning will be a thing of the past. The world's faith in the U.S.'s ability to pay its fantastic debt will be totally broken. This will lead to a currency collapse in the United States followed by a governmental collapse. The two are entirely intertwined. When the dollar is worth nothing, then government has no funds with which to operate. Food, gold, silver, and other precious metals will become the currency of choice. The dollar will only be valuable as kindling for the fire. We might even get a second dark age out of it. The world economy is heavily dependent on the petrodollar. When that's worthless, other nations will experience currency collapse followed by governmental collapse. And if we're really lucky, the Chinese government will collapse along with our own. If we're unlucky, they might just decide to invade the West Coast. They'd need hazmat suits, of course, to get through any formerly populated areas, but they have a lot of people that they can offload without having to worry very much. Oh, and by the way, you politicians, you're likely to be dead long before you see any of this. You'll be lynched, and not figuratively, but literally. You will be strung up by mobs of angry people. They may think that death's too good for you. One shudders to imagine what the ways that a mob can torture a person before they die. To be honest, I suggest that you start carrying cyanide tablets on your person. It'll be a better way to go than what an angry mob will do to you. Because, let's, let's be clear, no politician in office at the time of the, of the Civil War will be left alive. You will be killed one way or the other. Your own security detail might do it. It's not as if they like you as a person. They just protect you because it's their job. That's what a modern civil war would bring us. Death and horror by the tens of millions. Potentially it could mean a new dark age for the entire civilized world. Do you really want that, Democrats? Because that's what you're playing with. You have the civil war matchstick in your hands. You may either use it to ignite a war started by the right, or just back down and admit defeat gracefully. The choice is yours. Make it wisely. And that's all I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.